Do you even know what depression is before blaming it for an undesirable marriage? We're diving into a topic today that affects countless people around the world, depression. We'll be discussing its impact on marriages and exploring how it might not be fair to point the finger at marriage as the sole culprit. What is depression? First things first, let's clarify what depression is. Depression is a mental health condition characterized by persistent feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and a lack of interest or pleasure in daily activities. It's important to understand that depression is a medical condition that can affect anyone, regardless of their relationship status. Now, here's the big question. Can we really blame marriage for causing depression? Well, it's tempting to point fingers, but the truth is that depression is a complex issue with various factors at play. While marital problems can contribute to it, they are really the sole cause. Here are the 13 signs that your marriage is possibly making you depressed. Sign number one, communication problems. Effective communication is the lifeblood of a healthy marriage. When communication breaks down, misunderstandings become the norm and conflicts escalate. Constantly feeling unheard or unable to express your thoughts and emotions can lead to a sense of frustration and isolation. Over time, this can erode the emotional connection between partners and contribute to depressive feelings. Sign number two, lack of emotional intimacy. Emotional intimacy is the emotional closeness and connection you share with your spouse. When it dwindles, you may feel emotionally distant, like you're living parallel lives rather than sharing one. The emotional disconnection can lead to feelings of loneliness, sadness, and a sense of being unfulfilled within the marriage. Sign number three, lack of physical intimacy. A decrease in physical affection and sexual intimacy can signal a deeper issue in a marriage. The absence of physical closeness can make you feel rejected, unattractive, and unloved. These feelings can be incredibly painful and contribute to a sense of sadness and diminished self-worth. Sign number four, financial problems. Money is a common source of stress in marriages. Ongoing financial arguments, mounting debt, or a constant fear of financial instability can lead to overwhelming anxiety. The stress of financial problems can feel never-ending and lead to persistent feelings of hopelessness and despair. Sign number five, infidelity. Discovering that your partner has been unfaithful is a traumatic experience. It shatters trust and can unleash a torrent of emotions including betrayal, anger, and profound insecurity. These emotions can be all-consuming and have a profound impact on your mental health, potentially leading to depression. Sign number six, coping with illness. Or disability. When it's your own health issue or your spouse's coping with illness and disability can be emotionally exhausting. The challenges, uncertainty, and changes in lifestyle that come to health issues can make you feel helpless and emotionally drained, contributing to feelings of sadness and despair. Sign number seven grief from death of a loved one. Grief is a heavy emotional burden, and when both partners in a marriage are grieving, it can strain the relationship. Coping with the loss of a loved one can be overwhelming and emotionally isolating. The inability to provide emotional support to each other during the challenging time can exacerbate feelings of sadness and isolation. Sign number eight, stress Full life events. Major life changes such as job loss or relocation can introduce high levels of stress into a marriage. This event disrupts established routines and create uncertainty about the future. The resulting anxiety and sadness can lead to a sense of being overwhelmed and contribute to depressive symptoms. Sign number nine. Constant arguments. Frequent and unresolved conflicts can create a toxic atmosphere within a marriage. Chronic stress from these constant battles can lead to emotional exhaustion, making it challenging to find joy or contentment in the relationship. The persistent tension can contribute to feelings of hopelessness and depression. Sign number 10, emotional neglect. Feeling emotionally neglected means your emotional needs consistently go unmet in the relationship. Over time, this can lead to a sense of emptiness and sadness as you long for emotional connection and support that isn't being provided by your spouse. Sign number 11, criticism and blame. Frequent criticism and blame from your spouse can chip away at your self-esteem and self-worth. Feeling constantly criticized and blamed 
can make you believe you are unworthy or incapable, leading to feelings of worthlessness and depression. Sign number 12 social isolation when a marriage becomes the sole focus of your life and you withdraw from friends and family it can lead to social isolation this isolation can intensify feelings of loneliness as you may lack the support and social connections that provide emotional nourishment sign number 13 thoughts of divorce or separation constantly contemplating ending the marriage is a clear sign of deep dissatisfaction and unhappiness within the relationship these persistent thoughts can create a sense of hopelessness about the future of the marriage contributing to depressive symptoms when two or more humans come together to collaborate whether in a professional setting or in personal relationship it's almost inevitable that some degree of friction will arise however when we talk about romantic relationships, especially marriages, we're entering a realm where the complexity of human emotions takes center stage. Imagine multiplying the usual challenges by a factor of 10,000 for romantic relationships and then again for marriages. It's a recipe for a roller coaster of emotions. The core of many of these emotional challenges can often be traced back to two key factors, pride and unrealistic expectations. Pride can lead individuals to be resistant to change or compromise, creating barriers to effective communication and understanding within a relationship. Unrealistic expectations set the stage for disappointment because no one, no matter how perfect their partner may be, can fully meet the lofty standards set by these expectations. It's important to note that while some issues in marriage may indeed be rooted in the actions of one or both partners, a significant portion of these challenges can be attributed to incompetence rather than malice. Incompetence in this context doesn't imply a lack of intelligence but rather a lack of knowledge or skills in navigating the complexities of a relationship. The good news is that despite the seemingly overwhelming layers of complexity, that can accumulate in a marriage, it doesn't require solving 10,000 times 10,000 problems. Instead, it often comes down to mastering a few fundamental principles that can act as a solvent, dissolving many of the layers of tension and conflict. By learning effective communication skills, practicing empathy, embracing compromise, and cultivating emotional intelligence, couples can transform their relationship. These principles serve as a bridge to connect partners on a deeper level, allowing them to navigate the ups and downs of life together with love, understanding, and a sense of shared purpose. Ultimately, the dream of a life filled with love and bliss, which often feels unattainable amid the complexities of marriage, can become a reality. It's not about erasing every issue, but rather about equipping yourself with the tools to address and overcome them together. While no relationship is entirely free from challenges, the journey toward a more fulfilling and harmonious marriage becomes not only possible but achievable through continuous growth, learning and mutual support. So here are five ways to deal with depression in a marriage. Number one, seek professional help. Consulting a therapist or counselor can provide you and your spouse with expert guidance on addressing depression. They offer a safe space for open dialogue and practical strategies, acting as skilled navigators through the complexities of marriage and mental health. You can check out our services at lolaandola.com. Number two, communicate openly and honestly. Open and honest communication builds trust and understanding in your relationship. Sharing your thoughts and feelings with your partner fosters Empathy, helping both of you work together to tackle depression's challenges, ultimately strengthening your bond. Number three, be patient and understanding. Recognize that healing from depression and improving your marriage is a gradual journey. Patience and understanding toward each other's progress and setbacks are key. This attitude promotes resilience and a deeper connection in your partnership. Number four, learn to manage stress. Developing healthy stress management techniques such as mindfulness or relaxation exercises empowers you to reduce stress impact on your relationship. These practices enhance your overall well-being and equip you to face life's difficulties together. Number five, make lifestyle changes. Incorporating healthy habits like regular exercise and balanced diet benefits both mental and physical health. Such lifestyle changes help you with shared uh, responsibility when it comes to your health for resilience in the face of depression. In conclusion, 
Depression is a serious condition that can profoundly impact a marriage. However, it's essential to remember that there is hope. You might be one skill or tool away from happiness. Seeking professional help and implementing healthy strategies can help couples navigate the challenges and find their way back to a healthier, happier marriage. If you or someone you know is struggling with depression, please don't hesitate to seek assistance. You don't have to face it alone. Go to lalaandola.com to download the free books. It's our testimony and the lessons we've learned over the last 19 years plus. Hit the like, share, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. And if you found value in this video, you will like this next one that just popped up on the screen. All right, welcome back. So here's another question for you, babe. My marriage is making me depressed. Are there self-help techniques or strategies I can try to alleviate the depression caused by my marriage? All you need is give us one, one solid one. If you have more, give us. Then we'll take it from there. I don't, so if you say your marriage, marriage is making you depressed, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe you are giving too much mm. of yourself. Mm, and your, your, an empty your, cup. your cup is empty that's that's the only way i can look at it right because mm. this person is saying oh, they need strategies to alleviate the depression caused by you have to give to yourself mm. you have to take that time and just you know step away for a minute not stopping your responsibilities right but you because know, you're an adult at the end of the at day the end of the and day, you have commitments gotta be paid, kids have to be taken care of you know, the little things that you and the things that you can do express to your spouse mm. i can't do that right now mm. I, I need to i need to you know get some help for myself right right i think particularly with that therapy is what i would say to people right that's what if we're if we're talking about uh there's clinical depression there's the depression hmm. from the inside of the house hmm. there's somebody just you tell you that you're depressed one. exactly you don't <laughs> right. even know which one so um if it's a clinical situation where you've been diagnosed I would say make sure you get on a treatment plan for sure, you know. But 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 yeah, we're just gonna assume that's not that because we're not licensed therapies, blah 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 here. Mm -hmm. That's not what we do. You know, we need you to kind of have an idea of what kind of results you're looking for before we can coach and counsel you. If you're not sure of that, if you're just in a la la land and you're just floating around life and you're like this and just okay. to please engage proper treatment plan. Yes, and um, you know what? A lot of people I don't know. I'm thinking of so many things that be, can be causing depression for people, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we consume too much, you know, it could be in terms of social media. Social media. What are you paying You're attention watching too to? much House of Frida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Liz and I, so, I know. You know, sometimes I will say this. Yeah. I go to my mom's house mm -hmm. and then I start hearing all these crazy bloggers and what's about screaming. That I'm yelling, and I yelling, and one day I told my mom, I said, mommy, you didn't raise us with these things. Why is it that you are watching this? This is... You did? You told her that? I told her. What did she say? She was like, it's just entertainment. I was is like, ah, but before you know it. You just enter your parents' house. You normalize house. it. You just enter your parents' house. You just say, you could know power. Like, what? Wait, 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 what? It's too much. That's a lot. It's Serious like... Serious causes. It's like, what? Uh, Killing, boy. What uh, are you listening to? Yeah.